Well, good morning, Hope, Arkansas. Welcome to the morning worship service of the Unity Baptist Church of Hope. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us here this morning. The beautiful altar flowers today are in loving memory of Bob and Lena Massengill, and they are given with love by Wesley and Glenda Burkham and family. We appreciate uh, the beautiful flowers uh, this morning. We certainly remember Brother Bob and Miss Lena and their many years of faithful service here at Unity Baptist Church. And then the beautiful lobby flowers today are in loving memory of Miss Frances Cohen on the third anniversary of her homegoing, and they are given with love by the Triplet family. And we certainly remember Miss Frances and her uh, long years of faithfulness and service here at Unity Baptist Church. We're so thankful uh, for the beautiful flowers in both the altar uh, and the lobby uh, today. Uh, we also want to remind you of several opportunities of ministry. Our youth auction is coming up next Sunday night. We have a lot of neat stuff. Some of it's outside my office over there. You can take a look at it. But we have a lot of uh, neat homemade things, and we're going to have a lot of cooked, baked items and homemade items and brand new items and um, all kind of stuff. And so uh, gift cards and gift certificates. And so we hope that you'll be here and help us get those things together if you've got any. Uh, you, we need some more uh, things to auction off and then be here next Sunday night. You can read all about that in uh, the mail-out beacon this week. Also, remember, uh, we are signing up for Vacation Bible School staff. You need to do that today if you plan to work in Vacation Bible School this summer. Also, we have a senior adult rally uh, coming up at Lakeview. We've got a senior adult uh, conference coming up in Branson. So be sure and get signed up for all those things. And uh, our young people ha still, ha our teenagers still have some forms out uh, regarding mission ventures. So be sure that you get those all in today. We have a good team that's going to be assembled. We're going to be able to go back to uh, doing uh, Bible schools and those kind of things. And so we're getting excited about that. And so you be much in prayer about it. Okay. Well, guess what? Somebody found the egg that was left over from the Awana egg hunt. Cannon, come up here. Let's give him a hand. Come up here. What's your name? Cannon. Cannon who? Chambers. Okay. Now... Where did you find the egg? It was in like a concrete flower pot beside the bench, beside like the building. I, I don't know. It was in the, like a concrete flower pot buried underneath some roots or whatever. I don't know. Okay, but you could take me where you found it. Okay, all right. Well, it's in good shape, and um, I appreciate you going back out there. I'm told when he heard that, uh, there was one egg left. They decided to go out there and scour that whole place. Uh, this boy's got some ingenuity about him. <laughs> All right. And uh, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the $10 for finding the egg. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Remember, you gotta, you got to tie the dime of that. Okay. All right. As long as you got that. All right. Let's give him a hand. Well, isn't that good? Amen. What fun we have. What fun we have. Well, if you're a guest visiting with us today, we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us as our ushers take their places in front. If you're a guest this morning, we're going to ask that you remain seated during our welcome song, and our ushers will see you seated. They'll give you a welcome packet. If you'll open that, take the Let's Get Acquainted card out, fill that out, and drop it in the offering plate. We'd love to have a record of your visit, and then on your way out through the lobby on the right-hand side, stop at the welcome desk and tell those ladies, I'm a guest. They have a free gift they want to give you. We're so glad you're here. Guests, you remain seated. Church members, let's stand and sing our song of welcome.
as we continue our worship in the book of Titus, chapter, in, in Titus 3, the Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. We're going to sing about the wonderful mercy of Jesus today and the fact that we can be saved. Those of you that are saved, you can rejoice this morning because you are saved. And uh, let's think about that as we sing. Let's begin the old gospel song, I'm saved and I know that I am.
seated all across this building. Let's bow our heads together this morning to go to the Lord in prayer. Asking the Father to speak to your heart this morning and to meet with us here in this place. Would you pray? we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here today. Father, thank you for these people that are interested in living a life that more resembles Jesus. Father, thank you for salvation. You loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us, to be buried and raised again. Thank you for the promise that once we're saved, we're always saved. Father, we pray that you'll be with us today as we're in this room, that those who don't have a relationship with Jesus will hear enough about him to want to know him and want to be saved and will be. Help those of us in this room that have been saved a long time, but the distractions and the idols and cares of this world seem to have taken our focus our heart. The days of loving you so, wanting to follow you so in a distant past. While I stir in our hearts again the old songs of Zion love for you. So, Lord, we will serve you and work for you and labor for you. Help us not to get enough of you. Hear our prayer. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship. If you'll uh, take your hymnal or follow along on the screen, number 469, Saved, Saved, a great gospel song. I found a friend, y'all. His name is Jesus. Let's sing.
song, you may be seated. How thankful we are for the mercy tree and our salvation. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let's sing together.
have this opportunity to obey God, to worship him in the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Let us so worship you may be seated. Tried to tell me to keep a looking back. Guilt held me captive to the pain of the past. Regret used to whisper, You had your chance. But Satan's a liar, I know who I am. I am saved.
chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. In 1969, the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, they were awaiting the arrival of Hurricane Camille. There was a group of people at an apartment complex that decided to have a hurricane party. About 20, 25 people were going to be at that party. The sheriff went by telling them that they needed to evacuate. A storm was coming. They said the only one guy was the spokesman for the group. He said, the only way you're going to get me out of this apartment is if you arrest me and take me away from my home. The sheriff didn't arrest anybody. He took down their names, got their identification, drove off, and that man and his buddies, who were three sheets to the wind, laughed and said, well, oh, wasn't that a sign? About 10 o'clock that evening, the front wall of that storm came inland, packing a punch of over 205, we had 205 miles an hour. The raindrops felt like bullets. The storm surged. Water got to a height of 28 feet. Mass destruction was everywhere. The worst place was in this little town called Pass Christian, Mississippi. 24 people were killed because they didn't listen to the warning. Only one little boy, a five-year-old boy, survived, and they found him holding on to a mattress the next day. They were warned, but they didn't listen. Last week, Jesus warned us about taking the right path. Talks about entering the straight gate. Then he went on to say, for wide is the great gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go in by it. And he calls us to enter that straight, that narrow gate. He warned people to get off the broad road and get onto the narrow road. And he comes this week in verses 15 to 20, he, he warns us not against not just false paths, but false preachers. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Last week he gave us an invitation to enter. This week a caution to beware. Be careful, he says. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Be on high alert. Watch out for false prophets. Now, physical wolves are vicious and dangerous. I did a little looking on the internet, on Google. Google never lies, I guess. <laughs> wolves have 46 teeth in their mouth. They can smell from a mile and a half away. They say they can hear from six miles away, and they can run 22 miles an hour for two straight miles. They're vicious, they're dangerous, and they'll destroy your body. But Jesus comes and he warns us against spiritual wolves. That'll ruin your soul. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. You see, the devil will attack from the outside, through government, through law, through mandates, say you can and you can't, and the, the world opposes us to... ACLU will get mad at what churches do, and the devil attacks from the outside with persecution and opposition, but when that doesn't work, he'll join that church. And he'll seek to bring confusion and division, and that's why Jesus wants us to be where. So I'll give you three things from these Verses today, we'll talk about the deception of false preachers, uh, the detection of false preachers, and the destruction of false prophets. He warns us to be on the lookout because they are real. Everybody on TV that wears a suit and stands in a pulpit is not speaking for God. They are real. They 
warned of their reality. Paul warns of their reality in Acts 20. Verse 28, therefore, take heed to yourself. He's speaking to the church at Ephesus. And to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know after my departure, savage wolves will come among you. Not sparing the flock, speaking perverse things to draw disciples away to themselves. Peter warns of their reality in 2 Peter 2. John warns of their reality in 1 John chapter 4. Listen, it's no if, ands, or buts about it. They are real. And they are here, and they are in America right now. Now, they are real, but they are really slick at what they do. They're really hard to see. I heard about this lady who just graduated from cuisine school, food school, and she was going to put her skills to the test where she was going to serve appetizers and all those appetizers she was going to have tiny crackers she was going to have all, uh, olive she was going to have some pimento cheese and a slice of, tree, of cheese and some dog food I guess she called it hors d'oeuvres a la alto <laughs> And she put it on a shiny platter, and she went through the house with all these guests, and one old boy, he loved it. He almost ate a whole platter by himself. I wonder what he done when he found out the truth. Barked or bitter. Amen. <laughs> False prophets, their deception, they're, they're slick. They're charlatans. They're counterfeit. They, they bring and show up in shiny platters. But listen, it dog food's dog food no matter how you decorate it. Jesus warns us, the Bible warns us not to be gullible. Don't believe everything you hear. Not every pastor. Listen, I don't care what they put in front of their, Not every bishop. Not every apostle. Not every prophet, so-called prophet or prophetess is the real thing. You know, Americans, we are gullible. Do you know this year, or our last year, the Americans were scammed out of over $10 billion? Y'all ever get that email in your junk file? A uh, Nigerian princess needs you to send her some money? I mean, if she's a princess, why does she need money? But I will tell you that some, she has been sent over $700,000. You can't got to be careful going to the gas pump. They got AI now, and they'll, they'll call, and they'll tell you that they're your, they're your grandson, and they've been locked up, and they need you to send them bail money to get them out. Or they'll call and say, give me all of your information, or I'm not going to send your social security.
clothing. He, 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 he comes across and says, it doesn't mean that they dress up like sheep. He says it means that they'll dress up like the shepherd. Shepherds wore wool. And they look and sound a lot like the shepherd. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into, into ministers of righteousness. So you can't judge a preacher by his wardrobe. You can't judge whether he's true or not because he hold, he hangs a degree from a university on his wall. You can't judge him by his family or the part in his hair. I tell you, some preachers have got parts in their hair that would make Moses proud. <laughs> their Facebook profile, the size of their congregation, how, how does Jesus teach us? He says in verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree but get a bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into a fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Two times, he teaches us how to detect a cheap imitation. How do we detect who is false and phony between real and and right. Listen, wolves may disguise themselves as old yeller, but a tree can't disguise itself. A tree cannot hide its identity forever. Sooner or later, it'll tell off on itself. The fruit that it bears determines what kind of tree it is. And so Jesus gives us two ways to detect a false prophet, a false preacher, or a wolf in sheep's clothing. He says we ought to listen to the message they preach. And we ought to look at the life that they live. By their fruits, the product of their life will tell off of them. Now we need to listen to the message that they preach, their sermon. Not their content that they share. Now I'm going to give you a couple, are y'all listening? I'm going to give you a couple of things, an easy way to determine and detect a false prophet. In the close context of everything, one thing that the false prophet, a message that a false prophet shares is, listen to me, they universalize salvation. In the close context, verse 15 through 20 is close to verses 13 and 14. Is that correct? And he is warning us about the people who are on the broad way, and they believe that there are many roads to heaven. And false prophets will say, we're all going to the same place. We're just taking different roads to get there. They universalize salvation. Larry King was interviewing preachers on his program several years ago, and John MacArthur was on there. Now, I don't always agree with his a lot of his Reformed theology, but he says something incredible. They asked, Larry King asked John MacArthur, what happens when you die? Listen to his answer. Well, when you die, you go to one or two places. According to the scripture, you go out of the presence of God forever or you go into the presence of God forever. I believe that's right. Larry King says, depending, John MacArthur says, depending on your personal relationship with Jesus. I say amen. Which according to the Bible is the only way to enter heaven. That is right. 
King says, so therefore a Jew or a Muslim or a Buddhist will not go to heaven. MacArthur says, Christian theology and the scriptures say only through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, then Larry King interviews another preacher. He's got a big church down there in Houston. Larry King says, ministers ask, to ask Joel Osteen, I'll just tell you who it is. Ministers on our program have said that your record doesn't count. You either believe in Christ and believe in, and belief in Christ means you're going to heaven. If you don't believe, no matter what you've done, you ain't. The response is, yeah, I don't know. There's probably a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think if you know Christ, there will be some good deeds. Larry King says, what if you're Jewish or Muslim if they don't accept Christ? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm careful about saying who's going to go to heaven or not. Larry King is pressing the matter. He says, if you believe, if you believe that you have to believe in Christ, they are wrong. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that way. I just don't know. One preacher said he'd make a good weatherman. <laughs> a false prophet will tell you it doesn't matter what road you take. We're all going to the same place. A false prophet will tell you being a good person will get you there. A false prophet will tell you getting sprinkled or dumped in a baptismal situation will get you there. A false prophet will tell you that as long as you're sincere, it'll all be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that is wrong. There's only one way to be right with God and to go to heaven when you die, and it's through a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that is wrong, you need to throw your Bible in the trash. And Jesus is not who he says he is. He's a liar. Because he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life of himself. No man goes to the Father except by him. There's no other name under heaven given among men where people must be saved. Amen. I'll tell you another thing that a false preacher will do is it will trivialize sin. Sin's not a big deal. Jude, chapter, uh, Jude verse 4, it says, False prophets will turn the grace of our God into lewdness. That grace gives you a liberty to sin, that you can live as filthy and as nasty as you want to. It doesn't matter. God will be okay with it. I'll tell you something else. False preachers, you'll never hear them talk about sin. They won't call sin, sin. No confession. No repentance. They trivialize sin. Tell you something else they do. I got to get on down the road and rabbits keep running out in front of me. They universalize salvation. They trivialize sin. I'll tell you, listen to me. They sanitize hell. It is appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. Everybody will stand before God. And give an account of themselves. Everyone will be raised from the dead. Some raised to life, some to destruction. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got preachers, they're air conditioned in hell. Yep. Hell's frozen over and nobody cares. They think that hell's going to be one big party. And, and, you know, if we do go there, it's not going to be a big deal. And probably nobody else will, nobody will end up there. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. And if you don't believe what the Bible says about hell, you can't believe what it says about heaven. Forgiveness, love, hope, peace, joy. Jesus never stuttered when, it talked, when he talked about heaven. That's a lie from the devil. You see, the devil came to Adam and Eve, and he just tried to deceive them that God won't keep his word. God told them, you eat at that tree, you will surely die. And the devil comes. Did God really say that? Had God said, the devil wants you to doubt God's judgment on sin. Ladies and gentlemen, he proved that he will deal with sin at a hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. God's not your granddaddy, and he 
he's not going to say, oh, shucks, he's just a teenager. Oh, they're a pretty good old boy. They get the shirt off his back. No, let me tell you something. He dealt with sin at Calvary. And you either pay for your sins in hell or you let Jesus pay for them on the cross. False preachers sanitize eternity. Just because you don't like hell don't mean it ain't true. Well, can I keep going? Amen. Tell you something else they do. They prioritize weird things and worldly things. False prophets and movements overemphasize the emotional. They want to get your emotions all worked up. I think that's why a lot of people, when they go into worship, they turn all the lights off and it turns into a rock show. It's because it moves your emotions. And ladies and gentlemen, your emotions are the shallowest part of you. You get dominated and you get led by your emotions, you're going to do some dumb stuff. Can I get a witness? In the heat of passion. And what they'll tell you is that the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God is on your heart and on your life and in the service, that you're going to do some weird and wacky things where you get to jerk. You get to jerking and twerking, man. And you get to vibrating. And listen, you can watch it on YouTube, man. They get to laughing like hyenas. And they get to acting like they're drunk and blowing on people and knocking them over. I'll tell you what knocks them over. It's because they brush their teeth in three weeks. <laughs> and they're rolling around on the floor and popping like fish in the bottom of a boat. That's no different than what happened on Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal. There was a showdown that they agreed to, the God who answers by fire, he is God. And, and Elijah said, y'all go first. And they got the... Well, I said, you better get a little louder. He's taking a nap. And then they got to screaming and hollering and jibber jabbering. Well, y'all better get a little louder. He's in the bathroom and the door's locked. And then they got to cutting themselves. And they got all worked up emotionally trying to get God's, their so-called God's attention. Can I tell y'all something? God's not old. God's not deaf. His, his, his line never goes to voicemail. And you don't have to shed your blood to get his attention. He loved you and he proved that he has, you can have his attention because he shed the blood of his own son. They get weird. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need weird here at Unity Baptist Church. Now, I believe in freedom. A man, we stand and we'll clap and we'll raise our hand, but we don't need you rolling on the floor. We don't need you barking like a dog. We don't need you jumping up you because you're going to tread and fall and dislocate your hip and our insurance premium is going to go up. <laughs> you know what we need? We need you to show up every Sunday. We need you to bring a Bible and put it under your arm and just open it when we open it. We need you to volunteer to serve in various ministries that we have around here. We need you to have a smile on your face. We, and we need you to have a little pep in your step. Hey, we need you to put something when that offering plate passes by. We don't need you laughing like a hyena, man. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, they preach a worldly message. It's a happy gospel. It's a material gospel. It's a money gospel. It's all about upgrades. Breakthroughs, dreams and visions and brand new revelation. They don't preach about sin. They don't call you to faithfulness. They don't preach about heaven. They don't preach about hell. Why? Because they like it too much here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said this before, and I probably said it on a Wednesday night, but some of y'all missed it, and I'm going to say it again. If Hope Arkansas is the best that this thing's got to offer, man, we are in poor shape. I mean, I love hope, but if this is the best it gets, my Lord, help us all. But I want you to know this world's not my home. I'm just passing through. Amen. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. They preach about 
preach a worldly message. It's all about Jesus as a means to an end. They focus on the here and now. It's all about having a positive self-image. And they, they're popular. The Bible says in the last days, people will depart from the faith. And it said, Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be, and be turned aside to fable. People want this. Because they don't want to deal with their sin. Somebody told me one time, I don't like to come hear you preach because it makes me feel bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get you lost for you never know that you need to be saved. You got to know all the sin that comes short of the glory of God. There, to make the good news the good news, there, are, there is some bad news. I love Jeremiah says this, Jeremiah 5, verse 30 and 31, an appalling and horrible things happened in the land. The prophets prophesied falsely, the, pre the priests ruled by their own means, and my people love to have it so. Isaiah 30, verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things, speak to us smooth things. That's the day in which we live. Paul says their God is their belly. They think that you can manipulate God and you can demand God with positive confession and name and claim. You got to watch out for those guys. You got you to watch out for Benny Hinn. Uh, T.D. Jakes. You said, Brother Nick, you ought not be naming names. Well, I'm going to tell you. If, I, if somebody told us that there we had we had a kid in a youth group that was dealing dope, you'd want to know their name. Hey, right. right. Creflo Dollar, eh, eh, Joyce Mike, eh. <coughs> Kenneth Copeland, eh. they never speak about the holiness of God, the sinfulness of man, the bloody cross, or the final judgment. The last thing I've got to get on down the road. They humanize Jesus. Paul warned in 2 Corinthians to, to watch out for people who preach another gospel and who preach another Jesus. You know, some of those prosperity preachers, they preach that Jesus was just a natural born man. Paula White, I don't know if y'all know who that is or not, she said that Jesus isn't the only begotten Son of God. Well, that's not in the Bible, is it? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hey, if she didn't get that in the Bible, she might have got it in her dream at night, but she had a burrito too late. <laughs> the others believe in these prosperity preachers that Jesus had to suffer in hell at the hands of the devil for three days and three nights. And that our redemption was not really necessarily one on the cross. It was one in, uh, one in hell. I don't believe that. He said on the cross it is finished. And friend, when he might have went walking through the, 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 the Sheol, the grave, the place of the departed spirit. There was a happy side and there was a not so happy side. But ladies and gentlemen, he wasn't tormented. He went through there and presented himself as the one who had keys to death, hell, and the grave. He has come to tell them that he is the overcomer. That even though you die in him, if you believe in him, you shall live eternally. Friend, he was not a victim. He was a victor. Jesus was created like an archangel Michael, or that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. You'll have people come up to your door two by two, and they'll knock and want to give you some, they want to give you some literature, and that's one of the beliefs that they have, that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers, but God loved God, uh, Jesus' plan of redemption over Lucifer's, and 
Lucifer fixed the hissy fit, and that's why he left heaven. That's not the book. Jesus was not created. He is creator. Amen. Jesus was not born a mere man. He was born the God man. I believe Jesus was virgin born. I believe he lived a virtuous life. I believe he died a vicarious death. I believe in the victorious resurrection. And I believe in the visible return of Jesus Christ. If anybody preaches anything other than that, they're a false prophet. If the doctrine keeps us from exalting Jesus, worshiping, winning souls, and serving, it is messed up. We judge them not just by the content of the message, but the character of their lives. You will know them by their fruits. We can tell a lot about people by the fruit they produce. A tree produces what it is. Anybody can say, anybody can say, I'm a car, beep, beep, beep. This is for you rednecks in here. Anybody can say, I'm a turkey, gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> but who you are shows up in what you do. Now, there's no such thing as sinless perfection, but the traje trajectory and the habitual tendency of your life is to produce the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> we can alter our image. We may can alter our image, but we can't alter our produce. Good tree versus bad tree. Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. One of the reasons we don't produce fruit the fruit is because we don't abide in the vine. You get to walking with Jesus, some fruit's going to show up in your life. Amen. You can't but help it. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear it.
And he lets us know that God will deal with these type of people. These, these type of people. How do we know God's going to deal with sin? Well, he kicked a third of the angels out of heaven because they rebelled. You look at the flood. You look at the earth. Why did God send the flood? Because of the sin of the people. You look at Sodom and Gomorrah. God rained down fire and brimstone because of their sin. God judges sin. In that text, it's talking about false teachers and Christ rejectors. They will meet their faith, which is doom and destruction, a place called hell. It's sad to be rich on earth but poor in eternity. It's sad to have clothes on your body but nothing on your soul. You see, the devil, he just wants to give you a number. God wants to give you a name. Jesus is not a means to an end. He is the end. Jesus is not your Santa Claus. He's not your lucky rabbit's foot. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And he should be preached as so. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, they're real. They universalize salvation. They trivialize sin. They humanize Jesus. They sanitize eternity. But I want you to know that Jesus loves you. But he has got to deal with sin. God's going to deal with sin. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. You just say, they preach, well, if you get God in your life, Jesus, I mean, every, you get a get-out-of-jail-free card, man, your dog will never have fleas, your kids will always do their homework and clean up their room, your husband will never leave his dirty underwear in the floor, all because of Jesus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But hey, we're on the winning side. Amen? Amen. Close your Bible. There was an article in a paper in Tallahassee, Florida. And this article talked about a couple that was engaged to be married. The guy of this couple, he was a small plane pilot. And he wanted to do something nice for his fiance, so he got her to get on the plane and they took a trip down to the Florida Keys to eat some seafood. Man, what a guy. But on the way to this restaurant, on the way on this day, the plane crashed. And they both died instantly. Instead of having a wedding, they had a funeral. Instead of standing side by side in front of the preacher, they laid side by side in caskets in front of the preacher. The pastor gets up and he preaches their funeral and he tells the story. Listen, I'm going somewhere. He says just a few days before they died, they attended a Billy Graham crusade. Billy Graham Preach Jesus, the way of salvation. At the end of this sermon, the choir sang, they gave an invitation, and they responded and trusted Christ as their Savior. Amen. But what if they walked into the service of a false preacher? And all they heard was all dogs go to heaven. What if they heard that it's all about money, God wants you to be wealthy and healthy, it's all about your best life now, it was all about everything's going to be all right. And ladies and gentlemen, they would have died without Jesus. Hey, let me go a step further. I hear the bells ringing. You don't have to give me that look. I hear them. What if they went into one of these churches and no one invited them to say yes to Jesus? What if that church didn't give an invitation? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, and I mean this with all my heart, you are not okay. But that's okay. Because 
God so loved you, he sent Jesus to die for you. And if you'll call on his name, you'll repent of your sin, you'll believe in Jesus, you can leave Hervey Street on your way to heaven. That's why we got to fight the wolves and proclaim the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Father, we ask that you meet us in this moment, in this place, at this time. That you'll draw men, women, boys, and girls to Jesus and the cross. Lord, it's not all about our happiness. It's all, all, all about our success or our wealth or our fame. It's all about your name. God, I pray that you'll draw people to Jesus today. God, I pray that you'll put some steel in the backbone of this church and we'll keep preaching Jesus whether it's popular or not. There are people in here today that need to say yes to you. Maybe they're not bearing the fruit like they ought to. They're not walking with you and abiding in the mind. God, capture their heart today and call them back to you. Maybe somebody needs to join this church, move their letter, get baptized, rededicate their life. Lord, help us to say yes to you. Help us, Lord, to fight the wolves and proclaim the Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You sing, you come. Hymn number 417 in your hymnals, number 417. Jesus is tender. 